Yes guys, how you doing? And welcome to this video. And oh my gosh, Black Magic, what are you doing to us? So, I guess you all know now that they've brought out the new camera, the 6K G2, and the new software as well. And DaVinci Resolve is getting a new update as well. I think it's on the beta four now, and we should have a, a, a lot of new features in that too. Well, one new feature, which I wanna talk about, but we'll talk about that later. So first things first, let's get into the camera. And I know you're all disappointed because I've looked at the Blackmagic group and everyone's moaning about it, but these people, they do not understand how the business world works. So let me explain it quickly, just so you know why Blackmagic brought out this camera, this 6K G2. Now, this isn't any inf inside information. I'm just going by my days in business and doing business to business and why I think they did this, okay? So Blackmagic have, three cameras in the pocket range. We've got the 4K, the 6K, the 6K Pro. The 4K and the 6K, they're pretty old now, okay? But the 4K uses different lenses. It's got different style than what we're talking about on the 6K Pro, okay? It's a completely different camera almost. But then when you look at the 6K, it's kind of this odd cousin, this middle child that no longer really serves a purpose. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still an amazing camera. You're still gonna get the same great footage you've been getting for the last couple of years. It's absolutely amazing. But to have three different production lines going for the Pocket Series doesn't make any sense. Now, you've gotta think now that the world is in quite a bad state. We're in a, a bad economic state. Everything is going up, prices are rising, petrol, food, everything else. As a company, Blackmagic need to strategize now and to streamline their process and obviously keep profits coming in. So you can't get rid of the 4K because it's still doing its bits and people still want that camera. Obviously you can't get rid of the 6K Pro because it's their newest camera and it's got all the pro features. So what do you do? The main thing is just, re just refresh the 6K. Give it the same body as a 6K Pro. Take out all the stuff that some people might not want or that cost the most money to put in like internal NDs and ultra bright screen and then just give it the same price. In my opinion, that is a genius move. It's absolutely genius because they've not only streamlined their production process and their manufacturing process, but they've also given people who got a 4K or who are considering a 4K an even bigger reason to upgrade now. So Blackmagic made a genius move by making the 6K G2 absolutely amazing. So let's get into the update now. So 7.9 is the new update from Blackmagic and they put it on the 4K as well. How are they still updating this old camera? Like they love their customers, man, I'm telling you. So let's get into this. So 7.9, so we've got the new revamp menu and things have been changed around a little bit and yeah, just different text and, and a few other bits and pieces. So the first thing I wanna obviously show you is obviously when you look at the text, you can see that it's slightly different than what we had before. It looks a bit smaller to me for some reason. I don't know why, but it looks really nice. I think it looks clean now. Going over to the record page, everything looks quite nice and you can see everything as it was before. But I think everything is just laid out so much better, so much easier to find. I mean, for one thing, I remember when I first got the camera and turning on focus peaking was actually quite hard to find it and then to use it. But with this one now, it's so much easier. Everything is just put on the, the same page, so much easier to do. And I love the new focus peaking algorithm that you can change it to like 100 so it's really high. It kind of reminds me of the port keys, LH5P, when you could get real precise focus movements and you can see that right there. And when you roll the, um, your lens to focus, it rolls nicely. So much better having it at 100% because you know exactly when you're in focus, absolutely amazing. So if we turn that off now, another feature that I really like is if I hit the play button and we've got all of our clips here, now you can't really see this, but there's little lines in between these clips. So I've got one, two, three, four clips here, I think. If I press the back key, you can see it flicking. Now before it would actually change page. And sometimes when you're playing and you wanna skip back, it, sometimes it was a bit annoying, but now it's crazy that they've just marked it out and it's just there. So you can even just skip through to all the clips on your, on your storage and it's absolutely amazing in my opinion. I love that feature. But the biggest feature I wanna talk about is the gyro. So Blackmagic have activated the gyro in the camera. Now for you that don't understand what this means, there's a lot of devices in the world, not just cameras, but a lot of devices that rely on a gyroscope to stay straight, to stay level. Now, this is an amazing thing to have in a camera. But if you're familiar with Sony and their Catalyst Browse, so not only have you got image stabilization in your camera, but then all of the movement and the up, down, shaky movement has been recorded and embedded into the video file. 
So then you can take that video file, put it into your NLE or whichever, you know, whatever you do with it, and then your NLE can read that and then it can stabilize it more effectively. It's not just normal stabilization guessing, it's proper data coming from the video file. This means you will get some Hollywood level gimbal shots when you're moving, tracking, car tracking. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. For handheld photo, uh, video, it's gonna be amazing as well. And if you're walking and tracking someone, it will do a reasonable job, but I don't know how well that's gonna work out. I'm just interested in using it on a gimbal and seeing how it works out, but I'm so happy that they've done it to this camera. There's so much more we could talk about in this uh, in this menu system here. Like I like the way when you've got the menu button up there now in the corner, so you don't have to press any button up, the, up on, the, uh, on the actual physical buttons, which is nice. It's just a nice overhaul, like, and for the P4K for them to do that, it's really, really good. All of your memories down the bottom here now, so if you've got different memory inside your cameras, like an SD card and a CFast card and then a, uh, I don't know, an SSD on the side, you can flick between them just by pressing on them and using that, you know, particular piece of storage. Absolutely amazing. I really love it. And finally, I just want to talk about the update. Will it break your Metabones or Viltrox? I haven't noticed anything yet. We've tested the Viltrox and on latest firmware, and we've tested the Metabones. Everything seems to work, Iris, and yes, yeah, it seems to work fine, so no problems there at all. So guys, get upgrading, man, and let me know what you think about this update. Do you think the Pocket 6K G2 is a bust? I don't personally think it is. I think it's amazing from a business perspective. But take care, guys, and I'll see you on the next one later.